So let's get started. Okay. So thank you everybody for, for joining us today for, for this webcast, this webinar for streaming and shoutcasting. Um, we're going to be going over both the course, um, just in case anybody is um, not familiar with the types of courses that we have um, surrounding streaming and shoutcasting. And then um, everybody's favorite here, Bubba, will be uh, talking about OBS and using it and giving a, a bit of a demo and an overview um, on all that. So I'm super excited. Thank you so much, Bubba, for being on here um, and uh, and helping us out with this. So um, as always, if you have a question, go ahead and throw that in chat so that um, our chat moderators can be in there and can uh, be answering your questions and facilitating that uh, out to us um, who might be presenting. Um, so anytime you have a question or you need, you know, you have a comment or something, just go ahead and throw it in chat, um, which would be awesome. And, uh, and we will get to it. So my name is Alex Herbie. Um, I'll be your host tonight for the webinar, and joining me today is the awesome, amazing Bubba Gaddert from VEF, and uh, also one of our co-writers and, and contributors on the Gaming Concepts curriculum. So Bubba, thanks for being on here. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right. So Bubba's going to be working on our uh, our, our OBS stuff. Um, if you haven't seen OBS, it's it's a pretty awesome piece of software. Um, that he's going to get to a little bit later. So um, I'm going to kick us off and start talking about what we have to offer in terms of streaming and shoutcasting curriculum um, and courses or resources for you to be able to use in the classroom. Um, so I'm going to kind of breeze through this a little quickly, um, just because we have dedicated webinars on this content, and I don't want this to be some sort of sales pitch, because um, we are here for, hey, Heidi, there she is. Um, we are here for, um, for learning about OBS and, and how it can work in the classroom. So, um, you know, streaming and shoutcasting are the newest courses that we just came out with. Um, both of them are semester courses, um, and each of them facilitate um, roughly 47 to 50 something lessons um, over that semester. So one thing that's awesome about this is that these are project based hands on classes. Um, that students can work towards and build a portfolio in. So this is definitely a kind of a career connection, elective, tech elective, you know, esports class. It can be all of those things. Um, and it can also be much more than that because there's a lot of other connections that can be put into it, um, such as ELA, SEL, um, and then also journalism. So a little bit of, you know, um, differences between the two, um, you know, between streaming and shoutcasting. A lot of people know what streaming is. You know, streaming is going to be you doing something live um, or nece not necessarily live, but oftentimes it is live. But, you know, you are uh, recording yourself and you're doing something, um, you know, in this context, we're talking about gameplay. Um, so, you know, you're streaming your gameplay to Twitch or YouTube or, or Facebook or wherever you want to stream it to. Um, and in the streaming course, we focus on that. That is obviously a component, but we are focusing on a lot of ELA standards within the streaming book, um, as well as public speaking, because we all know that public speaking is a huge, you know, thing that, that high schoolers go through that they absolutely love doing, right? They love doing public speaking. And no, I'm just kidding. So hopefully everybody got that. But, um, you know, so public speaking is a big thing, right? When you get into the real world, you have to do you know, presentations, you have to do webinars, maybe that you never knew you'd be doing webinars. But uh, but here we are, and you're and you're doing these things and the kids may be doing that too. So we're preparing them for for their future in doing public speaking through streaming. So they're going to be learning OBS, they're going to be talking about social media overlays, um, editing content, but also script writing and planning, and a lot of decision making and a lot of like, graphics and, um, you know, kind of image um, enhancement and editing um, and asset building is a lot of cool stuff done with graphic design um, and digital media there. Shoutcasting differs only in that um, we're talking about shoutcasting or kind of sports casting basically over an event. And so you're going to be required to have in shoutcasting a lot more content or game knowledge over what you're talking about because you know, that's what you're there to do. Now, there's different types of casters, such as a color commentator or the observer or the main caster. 
uh, the play-by-play cluster who's who's talking you through what's going on. Um, and, and those people have to be incredibly knowledgeable about what is happening in the game to be able to call that out. So just to think of a sports announcer trying to, you know, talk about and announce the game as they're doing it. You wouldn't have a hockey announcer doing a football game because he would have no idea what to be talking about, right? So so it does it does the same thing in esports, right? So if you have a Rocket League guy or a Rocket League player that's really good in Rocket League, they would be awesome at probably being able to shoutcast and describe and talk through what's happening on screen. Um, their skill set should be limited to Rocket League versus going over to Fortnite and doing Fortnite. So your kids will specialize in a game in this class and work towards their content knowledge of that game through the class. They're going to learn equipment setup. They're going to be learning some of those graphics and overlays, um, and they're going to be doing their own shout casting over games that either they're playing or their kid, their their fellow students are playing. Um, and this is tied to journalism. This is tied to broadcast journalism. So two awesome classes where students are able to be able to build portfolios, right? They, they can show their work, all the work that they've done. They can show their roots um, of where they've come from um, and be able to either post that online if that's what your district prefers to do. Let that go out into the wild and let the world see it. Um, or you can keep it internal and you can just have them per- perform and produce that stuff in class um, uh, for you. So gaming concept streaming, this is kind of what's going on behind the scenes, um, you know, is kind of a, a blurb about what the course is. Um, a lot of it's what I just talked about. So um, we know that the course talks about public speaking. That's the focus. Um, but then it'll also let you do, you know, things like ELA connection, you're doing broadcast, you're, you know, cultivating a persona, um, you're learning audience engagement, you're, you're handling criticism, all of these things that are involved with putting yourself out there in kind of the public eye. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to Heidi to talk about some standards alignment, because everybody loves these courses, but they always want to know how does this, how is this going to fit? Like everybody wants to have these fun courses in their, in their building, but we do have to have some accountability to the higher ups. And so Heidi's going to talk us through how that works. Alex, I apologize for the technical difficulties I was facing oh. a little bit earlier. No problem. Um, so the thing to know about the standards alignment for these courses is that they are aligned to standards. This isn't some content that we thought, oh, this sounds fun. Let's just you know, make make some lessons based on whatever we think is fun. We actually, before we wrote the books, we looked at the standards to find out what specific content curricula we needed to hit in order for it to be a class that can be recognized by by a state, by um, a district as meeting the content requirements for specific course standards. And so for the um, streaming course, this is like your traditional public speaking course. So this would be speech or um, oral communications. And so we looked at the specific speaking and listening standards from Next Generation um, ELA, and we aligned it that the whole book to these to these standards to make sure that we were hitting on everything that a traditional speech course would hit on. And so they are aligned to Next Generation. They're aligned to ISTE and um, CASEL. Uh, this. This can be an English speech or technology elective. Um, And it's, again, if a teacher is wanting to teach this as a specific speech course, we have set it up to hit the standards such that ideally a school could say, hey, you can take this traditional speech course or for the same credit, you can take this um, streaming, live streaming course as well. Of course, that would be dependent upon the district and dependent upon the state, but we've set it up such that the standards match so that everything is addressed just like it would be in a traditional speech course. Yeah. And and I think that that goes that goes hand in hand with with some of our other courses. What what we are trying to do other than, you know, have like this kind of esports lens with the curriculum is we are enhancing possibly what you're already doing. So you might have seen over the last few years, the last decade, not many kids continue to go in journalism. Journalism is not like 
on the rise because everyone's wanting to get in it. But if you take journalism, which hits the same standards for shoutcasting for us, um, or you're taking public speaking or oral communication, and your your you know your numbers in that are low, our courses directly align in your state for these for these things. Um, and so uh, it's it's a huge game changer when you're talking about getting kids in and involved and and you know invested in a course. So. Um, yes, awesome. So let's talk about so that's that's for uh, streaming. And so shoutcasting, as I mentioned before, shoutcasting is what's aligned to journalism, broadcast journalism. Um, and so this is going to be getting those kids in the door to be doing that video editing. They're going to be doing some of the public speaking. If you take streaming before um, your kids take shoutcasting, um, and so you know they can kind of piggyback off each other if you're going to do them all in one one school year you know the kids can take streaming and then they can take shout casting um, and really build those skills into an awesome foundation for what they want to do um you know and shout casting is going to be things where they they do they, they do things like script writing they're still going to be doing a lot of planning um even though oftentimes shout casting is done live so that you you can't always plan for it but you can plan the ability to know um you know know the game so you know when there's going to be a break or you know some things that you might say or you need to do a player profile and talk about that. So these are some things that the kids are going to be working on through this course, um, as well as all of the other standards for, um, you know, the AV arts and media technology communication pathway that you might be doing um, or an ELA pathway or something like that. So um, Heidi, let's talk about the standards for, for shoutcasting. All right, so for shoutcasting, again, as, as Alex said, they are aligned to be able to count for a broadcasting credit. So we went into the career technical education standards and we lined up we, this, this curriculum with every standard in the, the journalism um, and broadcasting curriculum for CTE. And so, Whatever CTE format your state uses, the standards on our shoutcasting should align to um, your your journalism or broadcasting. We see it function really well in the arts AV um, audiovisual production classification as well. Um, but it's it's aligned to the the, the anchor standards and. The standards that you would need for um, broadcasting and journalism. Yeah, absolutely. So a question here from Jordan is, you know, is this meant to be the third in sequence to the gaming concepts pathway or run in conjunction with one of the other courses in the ELA counterpart? This, it really is up to you, right? So it depends on what the interests of your district are. So obviously we, we would want to say that you should follow the pathway up, right? So gaming concepts, fundamentals, interactive media, streaming and shoutcasting, right? That might be the path upwards, but it depends what you're trying to achieve. And so if you have a, you know, a broadcast journalism pathway or, or class, or you have public seat peaking and you see these numbers are dwindling, you know, throw some of this in there, right? Really enhance it, right? And then as you get more kids involved, then you could start offering lower pathways or lower classes for students to start their journey in there. But you know, if you have a lot of older students in the building that are trying to finalize, um, you know, course requirements for a public speaking or an ELA class, and this is going to get them in the door, um, it really, it, Mike might have a different thought on this, but it really doesn't matter which way you put them in. Um, it's just to, to see, for students to see that benefit and for you to see the benefit of, of students and you engaging and using Scholastic Esports in the building. Right, Mike? Yeah, I mean, and I think it's important that maybe maybe we haven't made this distinction, but there's just two separate classes. So, I mean, yeah. and I think we did that, but so one would be ELA and one would be, could be in your CTE pathway. The journal, the shoutcasting one definitely fits in the CTE pathway, whereas the streaming one is definitely based on more ELA and, and speech standards. So um, I would definitely say you're right on both accounts but you don't have to have 
you know, you can do shoutcasting without it being in a pathway or being sequ sequential in that order. If you want kids to take it, it could be a standalone credit that you offer. So, yeah. And no, Jordan, it would not be unheard of to do that. So if that's, what's going to fit in your district, that's yeah. completely fine. Others, others need that, that, you know, kind of pathway or that ramp to do that. And so we, we can offer solutions for both, um, any way you'd like to do it. All right. Awesome. So yes, so they align, we have all the alignments for your states. We have, we have that done for you. And so you can, you can just hand that to your board or your, your administrator and be like, look, this is how well it fits, which is exact. So, uh, and we are happy to provide that for you. Um, so mental health moments are also included in all of our courses. So, um, you know, that embedded in, in, and integrated mental health moments are awesome for kids to understand you know, criticism is going to come at them hard sometimes in, in streaming and shoutcasting. Um, and how do you deal with that? How do you deal with those toxic people that are going to be online? How are you going to deal with if you, you know, if you, if you bring it back a little bit and you're just doing things in class, how are your kids going to deal with the criticism that they're going to get from their peers? Because we talk a lot about constructive and deconstructive criticism in these classes and how you are able to move past that and fail forward you know, in a meaningful way for you to learn from this experience, um, because the the worst thing that we want or the, the you know, what we definitely don't want and your kids don't want is for them to, you know, feel really good. They produce a video, the first thing they happen and they get just torn up about it without any kind of, you know, there's no support behind them for this. There's no, um, you know, there's no kind of structure to be able to pick this kid back up and and let them learn from this mistake. So oftentimes, you know, we have these projects or, you know, even I I'm guilty of it sometimes as as you let this kid go out and do this this project as a teacher and you could you let them put it online or they put it online themselves and they just get tore up and then there's no, you know, there's no follow through with it. And with this all of that follow through and all that support that these kids need when putting themselves out there is built in. And so it's it's an it's an amazing support structure for kids um, wanting to get out there um, and, and do things online and, and stream and, and shoutcast, which some of these kids are going to be doing this class is probably already do it. So um, it'll probably help out because you'll have a couple of helpers, at least, uh, you know, in, in the class. All right. So how to teach this course, um, you know, these courses can be taught kind of either in any way you'd like, right? So however you're teaching right now, it can be fit into that model. So teaching methods, right? So it can be synchronous, asynchronous, blended or traditional virtual. Um, it's really whatever you'd like to, to teach it as. Um, the best scenario is for it to be blended, right? Or traditional so that, you know, kids are doing this with you in class. You know, you have that support structure, you have the class relationship. You know, you have your peers there um, and you have, you know, teams of kids to be working on these projects, which some are quite large um, when you're trying to do streaming and shout casting. So, um, so, you know, having this, this done in classes is going to be the best um, fit for, for these classes, um, you know, and then class investment and outcomes, right? So students, students know a lot more than we take to, you know, take them for. Um, and so, especially in these esports classes, they, they can be the experts in some things. So, um, if you're needing help, you definitely lean on your students to, to help you with some of these things. Cause, cause it can be hard. Um, as somebody who started, you know, esports in, in their school, I relied heavily on some of these kids to, you know, even help me, you know, doing things like connecting to Twitch or learning what discord was and, and all these things. And so don't feel like you have to be the expert because one, we can help you be the expert, you know, through a lot of the, you know, the webinars that we provide and PD that we provide, uh, but your kids are going to be experts too in a lot of that. So, um, so yeah, um, Heidi, Mike, anything else on, on teaching, streaming, shoutcasting thoughts on it? I just know that it's fun. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so nice to have a course when the kids come in and they're excited about it, you know, and, and if you're used to teaching the traditional speech class and maybe your students are a little grumpy about it because they, you know, the, the term speech class has its own connotations that maybe students have come up with, but they come in and they're excited about live streaming and yeah. just having it be curriculum that is not only founded in standards and not only 
you know, something that you can really feel good about teaching from a curriculum standpoint. You can feel really good about teaching this from a student enjoyment standpoint as well. Exactly. And so have fun with it. Yeah. Yeah. And I had never taught, obviously, I had never taught esports before we brought it into my building. Um, and and the quote here that there is there, it, it's on the slide there. That's that's my quote. That's that's exactly what happened because I did not realize how much of a game changer that esports would do. And if you're lucky enough to have this done in your building, change when it says public speaking, if you're going to offer streaming, change it to streaming. If only in your in your building level course catalog, because you are going to get so many kids that sign up for streaming class versus public. Put them both in. That'd be a good experiment. Put both of them in and see how many kids sign up for each one. Um, it would be kind of a cool experiment. All right. So let's talk about some of the best games to cast and stream. And I'm going to kind of hand this over to Mike and Bubba um, as our resident expert uh, game gurus here um, to talk about this. But um, but yeah, you know, I've got pictures here, guys. But but let's can we kind of talk about some of these here that would be good at starting um, if you're going to be going through here and what these might be, you know, benefits for these or, or cons of doing some of these. Well, I'll start. Um... I think chess is a great one to, if you're streaming to kind of teach people how to play chess, that's a good way to do it. Um, from a shoutcasting perspective, I don't know that that would be super, <laughs> I don't know that'd be a super great, <laughs> great one to do. It's like, man, look at that great pawn to rook four. I don't even know. I don't know chess, but uh, you know, I just don't see the crowd getting into that one, but um, they, might. they might, they might. Yeah. Speed um, chess, maybe. Yeah, speed chess. There you go. It is a yeah, good one to get started with because it is a lot slower. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you can, you can, I think it is great, but, um, but most of the others are professionally cast. I mean, actually, all of them are. I mean, even Minecraft, they have uh, Battle of the Burrows in New York and they, they have professional people come in and talk about it. So, um, and then, you know, League of Legends is, is probably the most popular game on there that's, uh, internationally well-known and maybe do a big production around that shoutcasting but there's tons of streamers that that even the pros stream and and you know those are great ways for um if you're wanting to learn more about these games to watch you know find a couple streamers who uh, play these games and show them and, and you'll learn quite a bit just from watching and and most of your students watch it anyway so uh if they're wanting to get good at a game they're watching a streamer i promise at least one or two of them so uh, yes, League of, League of Legends, speaking of League of Legends, which I've been playing way too much of recently, I'm just finding this video for Worlds, which is happening. I'll put it in the chat. Um, League of Legends is huge all across the world. A lot a lot of uh, teams from Asia usually win, and there's a really good show on Prime Video of an American team winning. It's kind of a reality show kind of thing, um, but uh all these games there are that's that's just scratching the surface because <clears throat> these are just some of probably the top games that you know like hscl has and your kids play a lot of stuff your your parents your you probably play candy crush or uh, other things those 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 are games out there it's part of the gaming industry so when i when i think about casting or streaming um especially the i think some of the um the, the the lessons in the shoutcasting book are also where a student plays and then they re uh, shoutcast or commentate over their gameplay or as they're playing. So there's a couple of those lessons like that, which are really, really cool in the shoutcasting book. And it's just a great way to um, get to know stuff. A lot of shoutcasters that I work with across the college and pro space they've all got really great advice but this was also the other reason why we created this i mean why i got asked to help out with this really awesome a set of books was there's not a lot of content out there for um anybody to be able to learn shoutcasting so this this book to be honest is one of the probably actually is the only thing i could think of that's not a uh, a group or community or a facebook group that talks about how to shoutcast because there's plenty of great stuff out there for journalism, uh, sports commentators. There's, I mean, I've taken online LinkedIn, uh, Udemy teachable courses as a sports commentator and a, a host or interviewer. 
And there's a ton of stuff out there for that. But for shoutcasting, it's just a lot of shoutcasters that are 30 teaching you how to potentially do this. And there's nothing out there for it. So having this as a student and using this as a for your school, for your for your classes, is huge because there's nothing out there like it. Well, I'd like to, on the streaming side of things, I would like to add, um, there's a lot of content that's streamed that is not video game related. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of people do cooking shows or crocheting or there's a bazillion art, other art. Bazillion, art. That's mm -hmm. my, that's my term bazillion. Um, mm -hmm. Other things that you can, you can cast or, or stream, you know, as informational material or, or, you know, enjoyment you know um so uh you know don't just focus and i mean we do this in the book in the streaming book where it's cast it streams something that's not a game right we start we actually i think we start there and then we work into the gaming aspect mm -hmm. of it so i think it's important mm -hmm. the best the way you're going to find success in streaming is one to practice all the time even if nobody's watching you know even if you're just streaming to yourself but also do something that you like you know do something that you enjoy because that's going to come through in what you're doing. My my first two years on Twitch, 2017, 18 was 99% art. That's all I streamed was Photoshop mm -hmm. and Illustrator, making people's logos on on Twitch. And so it can be anything. Yeah, content creation, I feel like needs to be, that's going to be the next pathway. I think schools are going to start, departments of ed need to be start adding because- you Content creation can branch into so many things. Alex, I'm hearing it across the globe that there is not enough of it. Yeah, I'm hearing it from all over. Like, why aren't schools and colleges teaching content creation as a certification, as a lesson, as a exactly as a class? And I'm getting it from a lot of people. Like, I think I think there's people working on it. It's just not ready yet. Yeah, it takes a while for the education <laughs> system to turn over, right? <laughs> to turn over anything new. So yeah, yeah, so those are those are great those are great games to to start with, right? Because you know if you're already competing with us, which in HSEL, um, then then these games are already going to be on your machines. They've maybe already been approved by your IT department. So these are things that would be easy to do because they're already in conjunction with us. But by all means, like you know Mike and Bubba said, play whatever your kids or stream and, and shoutcast over whatever your kids want to do because it it's really up to them. Because if you start limiting them and you telling to you tell them that you're going to stream this game or you're going to shoutcast this game, you're just going to turn them off to it um, because that's not what these classes are about. It's about to follow that passion and that drive that they have um, for something in esports. So, all right, let's talk about kind of the technology that's going to be behind some of the some of these two classes at least. Um, and so, some of the things that we're going to have to talk about are you know the software that students are going to need. So some of the, a lot of the programs that they have are, or we're going to have free programs online for you to be using things like Canva, or you might be using Google Slides, or maybe you're using PowerPoint or Google Docs. Um, you know, these are all great programs and it depends on what you have, but you can always enhance it by doing things in Photoshop or doing things in Illustrator or, you know, doing things in, in, uh, you know, uh, if you're going to edit things in, uh, you know, Avid or you're going to edit things in Final Cut, there's a million programs for everything. But what we offer to you is online programs and online software that doesn't require any type of subscription or um, payment. It's all completely free. So that's what that's what the, the standard is in the books. Now, if you want to go beyond that, then you definitely can. Um, so a couple of other things that you might need is, you know, accounts are going to be required for the game. Um, you know, equipment, you know, your equipment doesn't have to be expensive, but, you know, for streaming and shoutcasting, your equipment's going to be a little bit more, needs to be a little bit more beefy than just your standard, um, you know, computer class, right? So you're going to need to be able to have a good graphics card to be able to run multiple cameras, run the game, and possibly run other applications in the background. So, Consider that, and we can provide a little bit more information um, to you if you if you need the support on that. But you know, your computers are going to be more of esports computers, right? They're going to be beefier machines with bigger graphics card, more memory, um, and a bigger processor. Um, but that does lead us to OBS, and so OBS is kind of the big uh, elephant in the room here, right? Because it's on the title, so everybody wants to know about OBS. 
Uh, and Bubba, thankfully here, our OBS guru, is going to be talking us through OBS <laughs> and, and what you can do with it and why we're going to use it. Why why is it the standard? So I'm going to hand it off mm -hmm. to him uh, to talk about OBS. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I, I love, Alex, that your last line was, have you tried restarting it? Have you tried restarting it? That's a really yeah, good, that you're, comes you're from Mike. Mike. That's not Mike. Uh, that comes from Mike. That's Mike. There's, yeah. There's a British show the called... Book. Yes, the there's book. a British yeah. show called IT Crowd, and I put a GIF in the uh, link to a GIF, uh, but it's uh, hello IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Thanks, bye. Like that's that's what that's what we do. We call. Um, so, can you spotlight my uh, video, like my camera, like or our focus? I don't know what the term is in Zoom anymore. Hey, okay. So I'm actually using OBS right now uh it may look like i'm just using my camera but i am actually doing what's called the virtual camera if you've never used the virtual camera option it's pretty cool because you get to do a lot of fun stuff this this what i'm going to show you my next screen is actually probably overwhelming because i have a lot of um boxes and all sorts of stuff happening on my obs and obs you're probably wondering what the heck is obs or you do know what it is and you're trying to learn more well obs is open broadcast software and it is a free free tool that is out there for lots of streamers there is another version that is kind of a copy but it takes up a lot more power on your computer called Streamlabs OBS. It's good for maybe the first time using it. I used it when I was early on streaming because it was um, it was a bit more user friendly because it had buttons rather than like text <laughs> uh, compared to you know what you want to find. And then another step down, actually our friends at Twitch, um, they created a, a studio as well where you can actually stream through Twitch. Now, not every school, as I'm learning, working with a lot more schools, have access to Twitch, but they do have access to YouTube because of Google and other things like that. So there is a YouTube studio. There's some ways to stream from capturing. Right now, I'm capturing my video, my camera feed, and I'm going to show you here in a second where um, if you've seen someone on a Google Meets or like they're doing Google Slides or something in a school and maybe you can see their face in the bottom corner. Uh, picture in picture, I guess is probably a term we, we old ones use uh, that shows kind of two layers, a layer of the screen that you're seeing and then a little picture of the camera. So I'm gonna switch to where you actually see the back end of everything and um, here we go. So <laughs> be overwhelmed. Yes. So <laughs> this is inception right here happening. Um, but ignore kind of this middle part at the moment. I also have what's called a vertical, um, a vertical setup to where I stream on TikTok or Instagram. Um, I'm going to show you all these things here on the left are really just overwhelming, but we're going to go to what is when you stream, you have kind of an intro screen. And if you take this course or you have this, you get the uh, shoutcasting, the streaming um, curriculum and books, textbooks and all that. I'm using lots of different words, print all, all of them right. You will see Christy Custer go through these um, OBS lessons as a beginner, which is really cool. This is uber, uber crazy. So I run a couple different shows. As you can see here, this is one um, where I have kind of my intro screen and things count down. So imagine that you are starting a show. There's a countdown timer, you know, it comes into seconds. And then um, when everything is good to go, the start of the show happens like this. So if we honestly, if we look, I've got I still have a video of of uh, Mike somewhere on here of us streaming um what was it overwatch let's pull that up overwatch yes uh -huh. i was teaching the overwatch let's see here we go right here overwatch yes. we played this was one of my first shows i did and it was with mike and 
So as you see, there's a lot of different things happening here and it may be laggy for you, but um, you can see over here on the right, you're right, there's my face, Mike's face, um, our name tags. This is from August 17th, 2021. And this gameplay is the gameplay of, of us playing the game. There's, there's that word again. And so you'll see a lot of that um, happening in streaming, but mine's a little different because I like to have my face outside. So if I really got rid of these extra nerdy things here, just ignore these over here. You've got kind of this, this is my screen. So obviously if I move my screen out of here and I were to put up this video, you can see now that this is my gameplay, let's just say. And a lot of people will use this where their gameplay is their entire background. What you will start with is really basically a few layers. And I'm gonna build that real quick to show you what it is like because we're gonna have a little fun. Um, I definitely am happy to answer questions as well. I think I dropped the chat, though, there it is. So I'm gonna open up a basic new scene and my face might go away, but that's okay. You can still hear me. Okay, so I'm gone, I'm, I'm, I'm disappeared and I'm going to show you now by sharing my screen instead of uh doing oh i need to be i need to be added as a a a, a sharer sorry um alex right, hang on. Mm -hmm. and i'm gonna go and put my face there you go normal screen so there's me normal and you can unspotlight me now or move spotlight there we go so now i'm gonna share my screen and i'm gonna share let's share this screen it's fine okay so we've got a basic obs i'm gonna take all these other ones away so as you can see i've got basic obs all right you can move all these boxes around and whatnot this scene is the kind of overarching uh, level imagine it as a tv channel this is a tv channel okay and we've got what's called an audio mixer where we'll have uh, my microphone levels, my game levels, and these sources here on the bottom right. I'll try to stop the virtual camera. So my sources on the bottom right are actually, uh, if you watch the news and you see the news where it shows a report of something out at Wendy's and somebody's talking about their trailer getting knocked over or whatever it may be and somebody's in whatever and they're being interviewed and then you see a little pop-up at the bottom that says their name. So those we would call kind of layers in production. So I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to pop up a uh, game screen here. I'm going to put in my cam. I'm going to put in my. Uh, I'm just going to put in a fun background because I've got some. I'm just going to put in a fun background. Okay, I don't know if you can see these little pop up windows right now. Um, so you can add images. You can add all sorts of fun stuff. Let's see, I've got uh, way too many things. Um, let's add uh, a background. So I've got a gradient background here. Oops, that's there we go. So I've got this cool gradient background, right? And I added that as an image. So I hit plus and I added an image. Real simple. Well, I'm going to take a YouTube video of some gameplay. Let's say some valorant not valorant by the way i saw that typo valorant um take some valorant gameplay so all i'm doing is really pulling video feed from um youtube at the moment and let's say you're pulling video feed from a video game well you would hit plus and you would use a game capture to pull the game capture from it. But right now I'm just gonna grab a window capture and I'm gonna call that gameplay. And I'm going to select my Valorant gameplay that's popped up from my Chrome, my Google Chrome. And I'm gonna full size that. 
And so now I've got this gameplay going. What's cool about this is I can move it all around. My background, I locked. So I locked it here so it doesn't move. There's little lock buttons. I can also hit right click, transform, fit it to screen. So these little fun things here I can do. I can move this around, yada, yada, yada. I actually am going to turn off my camera over here and I'm going to add my camera on this side because you can't have, here's a big tip. You can't have a Zoom or Google Meets or a Teams or a Skype camera being used while also using OBS to use your camera. So I'm going to add a video capture device, which is my camera, and I'm gonna select my Logitech Brio, and there it is. And as you can see, it's kind of square. I've got all these, I've got a lot of extra steps I do. Don't worry, you don't have to do these things if you don't want. But now I've got this camera. So your typical thing you see here on a live stream, would be something like this. I'm gonna stretch this and make it fit the screen. And this is your pretty standard shot of gameplay happening. And uh, over here, we could have audio for the game coming through. And we could have audio for my microphone. So I can add my microphone as an audio input device. And I would select my Yeti microphone. And so when I speak, it shows up right here. If there was gameplay or whatever, I'd have it turned on as well. So this is one TV channel. I'm going to create one more and then I'm going to stop. And we're going to call it um, Full Face. And I'm just going to actually, which is fun, I'm going to just copy this. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to paste it, but then I'm going to make it big. So now I've got one channel. I've got uh, my full face and then my, we're going to call it gameplay scene. So a lot of people, like I have a friend, my, my youth pastor, I taught him how to stream he pretty much still sticks with two screens, this one and this one. And then he adds all sorts of fun stuff to it. So within OBS, that's kind of how you build if you've ever built in um, PowerPoint, right? These are layers. So as you can see, I can move these above and below and they go below or above, right? So it's very similar to uh PowerPoint presentation or Google Slides where you you, know, you can right click and move up and down. And then that's kind of the easy building sense of how you can get students to gameplay, to stream gameplay. The next part would be this whole start streaming side in settings where, which is great. I learned a lot of this stuff on YouTube, but you can learn this by getting the streaming and shoutcasting books from Gaming Concepts. <laughs> They're pretty amazing. But I stream to a platform called Restream, which actually sends my signal out to eight different channels. You don't need to do that. Um, really, this streaming option, people send to Twitch. There's a whole, there's a whole breakdown for it. Um, it's a lot of information. Um, um, our most OBS user, most what about private? Uh, okay, great questions. Let me answer all those. So our, our most OBSs, OBSs as in platforms like this, Yes, this is user friendly if you if you uh, walk through it and walk watch a lot of YouTube videos. <laughs> um, privacy data concerns, you don't put anything of your you don't log in at all. There's no login. It is download. And I don't know of any sharing that it takes. You save everything local, which is pretty nice. And cost associated, yeah, it is free. OBS is free. That's why we recommended it, this one over um, platforms like StreamYard. StreamYard is, is really great and an easy tool. But if you want to like get rid of the, uh, if you want to get rid of the watermark of the logo, you have to pay for it. Um, but this one is free. Uh, the other thing like StreamLab OBS is, um, is free as well. But then they have, of course, those programs, you know, they have just like video games and just like anything, they have um, premium packages where you can upgrade, right? 
So it is, it is a big, big tool and there's a lot of stuff inside of it. And that's why I think we spent, um, there we go. That's why I think we spent 15 lessons <laughs> talking about OBS. There's a lot. Probably both, both of these books. And probably because... some of, probably some of the best instruction you could hope for in a, in a technical manual this is how you do it step by step because you guys don't know Christy I guess some of you guys do because you you've been on here with Christy before but Christy will tell you herself she is not a gamer she's not into technology very much and that's why we had her write the OBS mm -hmm. lessons because it's you're starting from base level zero in, in technical knowledge and so her instructions are so good um you know and, and so easy to follow um and that's, that's what we wanted to provide with you guys, because a lot of times, you know, you get this curriculum or you get something, there's a project and it, it, it asks you to do something or it doesn't tell you what to use. It's just kind of a, a project idea. And, you, you know, what are you supposed to use? But OBS is the industry standard for this system, for, for doing something like this. And if we're trying to be closer to doing career connections and kids to have, um, you know, the skills that will work outside of high school, then you know, we all know in, in, in CTE, industry standard platforms or industry standard machinery is what you train your kids on. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's what we wanted to provide. Jump in on that really quick with the, the OBS lessons. Um, one of my first things that I did when I started with this company was to, I, so I had never used OSB before, never opened it, didn't even know what it was. And one of the first things that I did was I went through the lessons that Christy wrote for a first time OBS user, user. And I, and I went through it and I did it and I was able to follow it, having absolutely no background information on how to run, run the studio. And so I feel pretty confident that any anyone with you know even if you don't have background on running programs like that you'd be able to follow those directions and your students would be able to follow the directions it looks like a lot but it is very precise step by step and it walks you through it yeah and once you get going with it and you've done a few of them because once you learn obs you start reusing all those assets, right? Like Bubba has a whole library of assets that he can pull in for frames and overlays and video elements and, you know, your sources and everything. And, and you build those slowly as you mm -hmm. go up, right? And so your kids mm -hmm. will have that ready to go. And if you, you know, you do streaming and then you do shoutcasting, then everything is ready to go for you to migrate into shoutcasting all of the things that you, you have been working on. And even before that, if you have interactive media, you're going to create a ton of, of just digital assets, right? Lots of digital things that are going to be done in Canva or Photoshop or whatever you choose to use um, can all be integrated into the next class, um, which could be streaming and shoutcasting, streaming or well, then, and, and also, I don't know if everybody knows. Oh, geez, Bubba, stop it. <laughs> uh, I don't know if, if you noticed when Bubba was going through to select his assets, but how organized his folders were and his files and everything. We have lessons in there about how to organize everything and how to manage your storage. And um, because you're going to, I know you're going to have kids who just start to throw stuff on the desktop. All kids. And it's going to be, it's all going to be lost. All kids. You're not going to be able to find any of it. So um, being organized and, and backing up your files and everything, that's something we cover in here too. Is that's, you know, having redundant drives and, and things mm -hmm. to save everything is super important, especially if you're going to make a career out of this because. Uh, video takes a ton of memory and it's not going to, you know, your machines are going to get overwhelmed pretty fast, but um, organizing that stuff is because you're going to have, you know, raw footage and you're going to edit footage and you're going to have the final footage and there's just a lot. So um, anyway, just something to keep in I, mind. I'm looking at, I'm looking at your stream. I'm Thanks, looking Jordan. at the streaming. I'm looking, I'm looking at the stream. See Jordan. <laughs> Thanks. Um, look at the streaming um, course. And then like, I'm, it starts on page 26. Well, from, I guess, 101, I guess. Um, and how, what you said, Heidi, about doing as a first timer, I, Christy had asked me to come and review everything after she did it. 
And the only thing I had to change on her was just wording. Like, because she didn't want me to, like, she didn't want me to teach her. She wanted to learn how to do it. And, Mm -hmm. and like, as you said, yes, she is um, tech unsavvy. So, or I said, I said that, but she says it too. So yeah, I want I appreciate is that you guys did put in, and it wasn't me doing it because my mine is the advanced, <laughs> the advanced lesson, way way too advanced probably than what they'll probably get to. But I'm glad that we put it in there. But I think the the first levels of OBS and recording and streaming and everything else, the, literally, there's still there's no one doing this. But there's YouTube videos that are old, or they have sponsored ads or cuss words. So mm-hmm. you're learning, you're learning stuff, and the kids are learning stuff through lessons at school and that that's the one thing i will say to caution you on is that if you're going to pull videos up for your kids to watch your kids are going to be watching these things there are very few we have them in the curriculum we have them in the book but if you go out and you have your kids watch streaming and shoutcasting they will be exposed to profanity and some other and and other things that can happen on youtube even even from from a world-class event like watching you know, um, League of Legends, like Worlds, right? For League of Legends, it's televised kind of, you know, on the internet. But, you know, these are these are very professional organizations. They'll still say bad words, right? So just keep that in mind. Um, you know, you know, verbiage is probably going to be, colorful language will be the most that, that you'll that you'll get out of it. Um, but, you know, just keep that in mind that that we'll, we have watched all of us in in, in preparing and, and and finding things for this book have watched 20 minutes plus of a video or 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 15 minutes and it's going to be a great video and we're going to be able to add it and then it's the last 10 seconds of that video and they say a bad word right at the end and we can't use the whole thing so know that none of the videos that we have in the curriculum has has uh, uh, poor language in it so uh, as five teachers no have, bad have, words there you go. <laughs> That was the, that was the best. That was. The I best. always like to joke as we write each book that we finish YouTube. Yeah, like I finished all of it. I'm done. I watched all of it. <laughs> yes, there's no more left. So yeah, Just scroll and all TikTok the YouTube. was over. Yeah. yeah. So. So. so, all right. Does anybody that that that's I mean that's kind of everything in a nutshell um, about streaming and shoutcasting. And I so appreciate Bubba doing the live demo of of uh, OBS and then also adding a little bit of here and there. Uh, little flourishes here that I, I love with his camera here through our system. So all facilitated through OBS, I'm sure. You got to step so, up your game, Alex. You got to step I, up your game. Yeah, I teach you, know bro. I'm so basic. I know I need to take the class. <laughs> I need to take the class I helped write. So um, yeah, so I appreciate everybody coming on here to learn about OBS. Um, I'm going to leave you guys with um, this. Um, if you have any questions or you want to I threw it in chat for our YouTube. This will be up on the YouTube channel um, tomorrow. Um, And so please feel free to look at the the content that Bubba has put on there for streaming and shoutcasting. There are separate playlists on there. Um, Or if you have any other questions, education at generationesports.com. You can email us there too. Um, I'd like to open up. Does anybody have any questions that they'd like to ask or anything at all? Concerns, questions? Would love to take it now. Or for it, it, that's not actually Bubba. Bubba's not actually there. Yeah, it's uh, he's fooling us here. Okay, see. awesome. Well, again, I appreciate everybody being on here. I I know that I learned a little bit more about OBS just watching this brief overview. So I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> Bubba was making this hard. So. Thank you so much, everybody, for being on here. And uh, we hope to see you next time. And uh, have a great evening. And uh, go esports. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. <laughs>